The Frost Giants, the malevolent villains of our movie, they are not easily dealt with. Use snow, ice, water to terrifying effect. In the comics, you know, you have uh, sort of uh, blob-like snowy frost giants. Sometimes you have yeti-style hairy frost giants. We wanted creatures who looked like they'd been starved. They were leaner. There were less things in the way that uh, it wasn't a question of them keeping warm in a cold place. They absolutely were adapted to a cold place. They were, they were very spooky, uh, sort of like things as opposed to, to people. So we were getting away from anything soft, cozy, Christmas-like, Jack Frost-like. They were dirty characters. I'm just it's thinking, okay. again, I'm liking potentially Gotta be careful it doesn't go to sort of uh, di dinosaur -y, yes, uh, or whatever. We needed to cast their leader. A character like this needs to be uh, complex, it needs to be a great military leader, tactician, he needs to give all that. Judicious quick look, as in now I've got you, old man, and then and then he Yes sir. Zach. Excellent. Colm has, has, I don't know, 17 seasons with the Stratford, Ontario company up in Canada, so he has a vast uh, range of experience when it comes to complicated and evil characters. In a sense that it it takes more to push this creature off the ice to yeah, yeah. get through space. Yeah, determination, that's terrific, terrific. He was able to use the kind of economy that means with a character like that, often in repose, there's a stillness, there's a dangerous stillness. So what you get is the potential, the hint of this lethal, deadly quality. And I can bring that to bear to this poor misunderstood guy, Laufey. They are beyond diplomacy now, old father. From the moment he starts to speak, your heart beats a little quicker. You get what he came for. War and death. He just had that character down to a T. He was so incredible, and it really made the hairs on your spine rise because it was just, I mean, his just his so powerful, his voice. In trying to define the shape and sound of him, we used other actors and, and similar vocabularies that we have from the theater and things like that and saying, OK, he could be you know, this could be the sound of, an, of a, a guy in a world that is decaying, that was grand at one time and is now, you know, sadder and more broken and remote and misty. And so that should be reflected in, in the sound of him, not just the look of him. Imagine, if you will, an Alfie voiced by Kenneth Branagh, which is likely how it's going to turn out. As frightening and as odd that his final Laufey look was, it had to kind of convey a personally tragic, tortured, angry soul. And I think that our sculptor on that makeup, which was Aryan Tutin, really captured the essence and, and allowed a lot of Colm's face to come through, which was very, very helpful. Looking at this again, this one's kind of interesting, and it kind of feels like what Alex was doing a little bit on um, some of the other things. I don't know if we want to explore that again. <laughs> The design work is just spectacular, what's coming together. This blue skin, these red eyes, a face still very much recognizable to get the performances. Once we establish the armament, then we will sketch in the scars. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We can't do that until we know where this placement of everything, you're happy with the placement of the armor. Right. Like right now, if, if I, like, I love the idea of the jade into the skin. Now we know we can do something etched around in scars with that yeah. too. Because the character is virtually naked, it was very important that he's scarred, he's, he's hacked up. He shows the signs of, of a long life of battle-weary engagement in trying to be top dog and it not working out. So he's, he is scarred. You know not what your actions would unleash. We sit in the chair and um, V. Neal and the genius Aryan, who has both sculpted and is doing his first makeup job, putting this on me. We sit down and we start painting me blue. I'm glued in to a bald cap. There's a skull, a big skull piece, forehead piece, cheek pieces, jaw pieces, nose pieces, and they all go on in sequence. There's eight, at least eight pieces to do just the face and, and neck. Once we're happy with that, we painted the hands blue, then nails, we paint, we glue, it's, it's ridiculous. See, I want them to see your skills and your genius, not just your hair. <laughs> <laughs> Colin did an amazing job. I, I mean, just incredible job. His voice, I mean, it was just he, terrifying. From day one, you know, he, the enthusiasm that comes out of that guy is, is uh, it's epic, <laughs> you know. Wonderful actor. It's fun to work with him. We had some great scenes together. And this, now, your boy. 
Your boys sort this out. You think you know Thor, you may think you know Laufey, but this is ours, and we've given it an enormous amount of thought. And so, uh, you know, I'm proud to say I, I think we've come up with something that, you know, will be of interest to people. I hope it's true.